Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play, uh, I almost said Final Fantasy IX, this is in fact Grand Theft Auto V Grand Theft Auto on the Mysterious JG. The uh, reason I had to have Grand Theft, or Final Fantasy IX on the brain a little bit, this is actually my second attempt to record this particular video because uh, I sat down uh, a couple of days ago, recorded some Final Fantasy IX, kind of got stopped in the middle of my session, came back. And at some point, uh, hit a button on my uh, headset where I muted my own microphone. So I recorded an entire video of Final Fantasy IX without capturing the commentary. And then segued into Grand Theft Auto V and recorded a video of that. Realized I had done that. Uh, and while I went back and re-recorded, like I just used my Final Fantasy IX footage for reasons. Or, you know, whatever. I got Zerfall to do post-commentary. This game, I just was like, well, fuck. I'm just going to chuck that video. Like I had... I was smart enough to save in such a way that I could just go back and recreate the contents of this video. So eat shit and die me because I am costing myself valuable hobby time fucking around. Uh, now enough time has passed. I don't remember what I was talking about in the last in the video that went missing. I can't really do much to recreate the experience. I do think the last video that did take, I was talking about the fact that we won't see Trevor in the suit for very long. As soon as you switch away from him, the game will find some reason to take him out of the suit. So, what I have already done, and I'm now doing again, is uh, a mission where we are going to... So, you know, we have a rampage we could do up here. But in fact, uh, we should have a Strangers and Freaks mission to do for... Well, now I'm not seeing it. She was calling us fucking tool when we ran her over. I think she was starting to call us a fucking tool for breaking in front of her. And then I didn't end up breaking. Um, yeah. Interesting. So what the hell? I, uh... Perhaps I have fouled this up, but I thought... Well, there's actually a really easy way to tell. I thought I had uh, loaded. Oh, you know, no, I messed this up. So I loaded. Okay, I'll tell you what. We're going to replay a Strangers and Freaks mission because why the hell not? That is what you guys basically missed. I load. I, I recorded. I finished a Strangers and Freaks mission. And, oh my, is it going to go through all this loading shit anyway? We have like 20 minutes of watching the different uh, still pictures of our playable characters and other characters and the, no, never mind. It's fine. So, yeah, so in the video that has been lost to the nether, uh, I did the mission we're about to do and dicked around a bit, a bit I guess, and had started in on a mission as Michael DeSanta. Uh, and I guess I thought I was loading right before I did all that. I guess I accidentally loaded an autosave that was made when we did this. But so I'll just, yeah, and that's another reason it's easy to, it's kind of easy to replace lost footage from this game because you can just replay, unless something fun and zany happens uh, during free roam, you can just replay the mission. So we're replaying this mission and then I don't know what we'll do, but boy, boy howdy, it's a chaotic world, isn't it? So yeah, so we drove to... Some spot on the map to do a, um, not quite the last, but the last for right now mission in the Strangers and Freaks chain about the two weird British uh, tourists who Trevor has kind of taken under his wing and was, like at one point he murdered a golfer so that he could steal a guy's club for these people. Uh, this is like the last mission that we have for them that I uh, is available to us right now anyway. Yeah, I, got you that I don't know why they Ooh, call us Chuck. Where's your wife? Mrs. Thornhill, she's not my wife. She's got a husband oh. and two lovely kiddies at home. We met. Um, uh, she's what you'd call my mistress. Oh, never she? mind, I guess it's well, sexual. trying to throw herself under celebs' wheels. <laughs> well, no, well, she can throw herself under my wheels anytime. Uh, your balls, I see what you mean now. Yeah. You were funny, Jock. Yeah. Yeah, hilarious. I, knew I would like you. 
Mm-hmm. Can I have a hug? As long as it's not okay. sexual. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've got a protruding hip. It's not a semi. Nigel, don't. <laughs> See, because of boners. What? Only Alvin Appley walking. He actually walks. He walks among us. us. Well, then what are you freaks waiting for? Well, that's a long story. A mistaken identity. And a lot of lies. Stalking is Just a whole bunch of mean old lies. Me, I told the judge I thought it was unfair. Yes, anyone's trousers could have come undone at that point. Exactly. Jolly bad luck, and we were such fans. Mm. Or also, we're freaks, but uh, we don't mind you calling us that. His lawyers and agents. They ruin everything. If we could only get him somewhere private, you see, like that little lockup, I know. No problemo. Look, there he is. Okay, so the zany scene here is that we're kidnapping this guy because we believe... Oh, our fatty chariot? We believe... They believe the only reason this guy won't hang out with them is because of agents and stuff. That totally he wants to be there for him. The high street. Because <laughs> this is indeed a high street. A high street is a uh, pedestrian shopping uh, area. And uh, that is what we are do we are driving illegally on uh, the high street. So there is no sense at all in us, uh, like shooting at his tires or trying to slow him down. This is a classic later Grand Theft Auto game sequence where you just chase someone for a pre -dis pre uh, laid out. There we go. That was kind of funny. I don't think I got that in the uh, missing footage. Oh, I'm doing a lot worse than I did uh, on live. Not that it matters in the least. Although I got that, like, yeah, last time the only place I messed up was there, that turn we just made. Oh, and I meant to joke around about the fact that, uh, yeah, the, the, these these poor tourists who are like, oh, it's just his managers and agents who are keeping him away. Really, he would love us if he met us. And uh, but also, they want to they want to take him to a lockup. Like they have a lockup, which they have set up for the purpose of detaining celebrities. <laughs> anyway. Earth will we feed the man? I hadn't even thought of that. He probably eats sushi or quinoa. Is that even how you say it? What if quinoa? Don't get flustered. Find out! He's going into the car park! Look oh. No worries, mate! Oh, see, now, I, I messed that cow. I do remember Trevor, like, reacting violently. Not violently, but just, like, loudly reacting against something british -y they said. But I was starting to make the exact same blame. Oh, the car park that the game did. But the car park, no worries, mate, is odd. Because these, these two are clearly, like, posh. Uh, British accents as opposed to like some kind of like Cockney or uh, you know working class British accent so Trevor is a little confused about what accent he should be doing how could he not this lockup you prepared sounds charming just be yourself Mrs. Thornhill maybe I should have driven oh my giddy aunt oh he's, everything okay there he's turned into the second doctor my prostate has taken quite a beating why well, must you talk about your prostate at all times? All those stunts you used to do. And we saw you're up for governor of San Andreas. Yeah, you are not. I'm not sure who I'm they think he is, but. This is my dream of Oh my lord! Hold on to your corsets! Oh, for hernia! It's been pre-decorated uh, to look wrecked in a very specific way. But I think we just got the only thing I missed last time while missing something that we got last time. Because I didn't chase him quite as closely as I did off-screen. But on-screen, I ran over someone to the hospital, which apparently cost me gold status in this mission. Crazy. 
You guys can get him to lock up on your own, right? A true gentleman. This is so exciting. Not jobs. So we'll see what kind of score I got this time, or maybe it won't even show us. Yeah, I got accident and emergency, not a scratch. So I continue to... I don't know how this will work. I, I mean, I don't care, but I, I'm always curious. Oh, see, now, yeah, so we're going to have to sit in front of this loading screen for 800 years. So off screen, I got the first and third, uh, or rather in the video that I deleted because the, the commentary didn't record. I got the first and third objectives, one of which was keeping the car relatively unmarked, and the other one was keeping fairly close. And then the middle one, which I had no idea was an objective, was not to hit anybody in the hospital while driving to the hospital. Well, I managed to get that this time. But I missed one of the other two. I'm not even sure if it was... I think it looked like the car got beat up, and that's what I lost. Although it seems to me like I shouldn't have gotten credit for the car being in good condition or staying close behind. But maybe I didn't never quite got far away enough for that to count against me. It's hard to say. But collectively, uh, between one now lost to the ages run and one that I just recorded, I got all three objectives, which I, I don't care about other than the fact that it's just a, a curiosity. Like, if you, I, this is the kind of game I could see if you really loved this game, wanted to go through and, and get gold on all of the missions. But it, also, it's very apparent to me playing the game that you know, in a lot of cases, there's just no way you're going to get gold on the first attempt because there'll be some random thing that you need for gold medal status that you wouldn't even know you have to do that the first time playing through the mission. Like, you know, don't hit anyone when you're in the hospital portion of the chase. There's, be there's better examples of stuff that are just completely random, like, you know, make sure to not make sure to KO the gardener with a, you know, stealth assault while sneaking in to steal, uh, you know, the Michael DeSanta's car in the, in the plot mission earlier in the game where Michael DeSanta is introduced, but it's like, you would, you might think I just need to run past this guy without alerting him at all rather than stealth attacking him, and then, boom. You know, you don't get gold because a thing that would seem to be an even more slick and, and efficient way to get through, not even being, not even making contact with the gardener, it turns out to be a thing that costs you gold. And I'm just vamping because I'm trying to kill time while this all, this loading happens. Yeah, irritating. If, Grand, if one of the improvements Grand Theft Auto 6 makes is just to have reduced loading times, I will be all about that. But as I, I think I bitched about this on the video that was lost, and not two videos ago. I hope so, because otherwise I'm complaining about it for you guys two videos in a row. The fact that with each new generation of system, it seems like... Uh, instead of... Instead of making load times reduced on, you know, in games, load times get longer and longer and longer because even though there's like, you know, infinitely more space in the hard drive and in random access memory or whatever of your newer video game consoles, they like all the programming of everything just gets bigger and more bloated so that it takes even longer for everything to load. Which is why it's insane when you go back and play an old game on a modern hardware and it's like, you know, it's like trying to play like Windows 95 games uh, in a modern Windows and like, you know, timed events get screwed up because you have to slow the clock speed of your computer down for anything that involves timing to work properly. Hey, Jackie. Like you can, you can fit like a thousand copies of the entire universe of Starflight 2 trade routes of the Cloud Nebula in, uh, you know, in a fucking, like, Super Nintendo cartridge. But SNES games will load slower and more inefficiently than DOS games did. Alright, well, now that I've done my old man complaining, let's, uh... Let's do the second half of what that first, uh, what that lost uh, episode was. Which was me getting started on this storyline. The Solomon storyline. Solomon Grundy want pants too. So we were introduced to the character of uh, Devin Weston, Devin Seven of Apocal, and uh, he seems 
to promise much. Like, it's like, he's gonna, we're gonna give you a big money opportunity. And Michael was, like, not at all trusting him, but then he was like, come on, what, what, what's your turn on? There's gotta be something. You like movies? I'll introduce you to Solomon, and then whatever. And Michael, who seemed really distrustful, was kind of like immediately won over, and is now going on to meet Solomon. So I will be, I am legitimately curious. I remember enough about the story to remember Devon. I'll try not to spoil where the Devon storyline goes. There are some people, like, the instant you meet them, you know you're going to end up an enemy with them. Like, Carlos Diaz in, in Vice City is not presented as someone for whom Tommy Versetti will have a long and healthy working relationship, you know. Uh, and then there's people I always figured we'd end up betraying at some point that you don't betray. But uh, Solomon, yeah, it's like, I don't know if uh, Michael's dreams of... Hollywood, because he does seem to, like, kind of... He's a movie buff. He loves the idea of movies. He moved out to California as part of a dream, because I think he was not a California guy originally. So let's see if uh, he ends up enjoying the movie biz, or if it just turns into, like, a weird thing like Tommy Versetti, where he was just jumping from rooftop to rooftop on a motorcycle, advertising a porno. <laughs> oh, and uh, before we go any further... Big quality of life improvement that, uh, although it didn't do the whole, like, you know, the sun moves rapidly in the sky and the time of day changes. So maybe you can just start this mission, whatever. But I was, I was convinced that this would be a Vice City style thing where I came to start this mission in the middle of the night. So I would just get a message telling me to come back later. And that didn't happen. Hello. Come in. Hello. Come in. Thanks. You must be Michael. Yeah. You take care of the place where the mass was away, huh? Now I have to make my own coffee and give myself a happy ending. <laughs> well, which See, of those is the bigger problem for you? Coming in, but the walls will hold us. Nelson in Naples. Pluto. Okay. I said Mars, you cocksucker. <laughs> Shoulder of Orion, two. Two. Devin Shoulder Wilson of Orion, two. two the famous X-rated sci-fi uh, mainstream American film in which you were allowed to use the word cocksucker. <laughs> A fan. Huge fan. Tell me, Michael. Devin Weston. Did he? Devin seven of a Does he want you to bump me off? No, not at all. He said you were retiring but might need some help. No, he said somebody else would be murdering you, and I was just to hang out with you until then. Him and my son, they want to put me out to pasture so they can turn this place into condos or a theme park or something. But this place is a dream factory. Well, it's a condo dream, dream factory. Some days, yeah. I don't blame him. You know, they always say, never work with children or animals. Well, or the Chinese, but I can't say that anymore. I'd get in trouble. With directors or actors. This picture is going to kill me. Okay, I keep interrupting at inopportune times. If he doesn't want to work with directors or actors, he should... Uh, I mean, the actors thing, yeah, just go into... Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just go into uh, uh, Pixar world. Or, uh, you know, you could just AI voice acting and AI generated characters. I... I recently, I keep coming across this video. It keeps showing up on my recommended feed. This is a weird, this is a weird side trip to go on. Skip ahead if you want, but. So, I guess StarCraft, there was like a PS1, maybe it was even SNES, but I think it was PS1 port of StarCraft, which I'm assuming was a fucking terrible game. Uh, StarCraft, not a game that was meant to be played on a controller by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, it featured additional missions that none of the other, uh, that the PC releases of StarCraft never had. Um, it actually introduced the StarCraft II favorite character, uh, Vice Admiral Stukov, infested Zerg Stukov, was actually first appears as a villain in uh, some games set after Brood War or some missions set after Brood War that were only in the PS1 port. So I keep coming across this video of the PS1 but the PS1 version of StarCraft didn't have voice acting. Uh, at least not for the mission briefs. So there's no, there's nothing where the voice actors who do like Raynor or Artanis actually brief that mission. But there is a video version where somebody took that footage and used, quote, AI voice acting to generate fake Rainer and Artana's voice. 
and they are terrible. Like, look it up. It's so bad. And now that I've wasted like five minutes explaining it, let's get back to this game. I just, when he talks about he doesn't want to work with directors or actors, I, I just start picturing, I'm going to make a movie about like some kind of zombie AI Rainer and zombie AI Artanis. I want to pay any actors. So what's it about? It's, it's about zombie thing. AI Rainer. Set in Liberty City. Hmm. Meltdown. It's all being shot on green screen right out back there. We take a look at the financial crisis. Uh -huh. And then we boil it all down into a really simplistic battle between two yuppies. <laughs> I like this part, actually. Lots of training montages. So what's the problem? Milton McElroy. It sounds like a piece of the shit. In the second lead because he's cheap. Zero quote prestige end quote exactly. film well he's got this new agent Rocco Pelosi he's been hassling us about renegotiating the deal so now he's holding up shooting until he gets paid that sounds problematic it would be if the director wanted to shoot mm -hmm. Anton Baudelaire Ever heard you want to him? shoot Anton Baudelaire surprise me now he's having a mental breakdown pissing all over himself who knows where <sighs> all right looks like you got yourself that new assistant but what no I didn't ends. offer you a job. I love you already. I hate being masturbated. I don't know why there was a uh, bear with an alarm Chiron thing on its head. Anyway. Is Rocco Pelosi, was he uh, one of the various mafia goon characters from uh, Ballad of Gay Tony? I kind of think he was, but... Sort of doesn't matter. Yeah, wasn't there like some jerk who? Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt some woman for Rocco or whatever. Whatever. I think yeah, because he was one of the villains. I was like, I was convinced we were gonna deal with them, but the game just kind of ends. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, let's go do this. Uh... Hey Solomon, I'm just doing that thing. Good, good. Now I realized in my excitement I forgot some details. Yeah, it seemed obvious. All right, uh, so uh, the other little uh, departure I remember having, recording this before without commentary, I'll just get ahead of it. I'll try to keep it brief. Rockstar writing. One of the things that drives me nuts is they like to do these fully animated cutscenes of characters talking. The writing is usually very crisp and compelling by video game standards, but then they'll either build up characters and, and kind of story, or they'll explain the mission that's coming, but rarely are they able to pull off both. So I'll try to keep keep quiet and let it play out. But what we're about to have is, yeah, we just had this like kind of compelling, visually interesting, very movie-like scene between Michael and Solomon that ends with Michael going out like he knows what he's doing. But in fact, we were not given any information on what the fuck we're supposed to actually do. So now we're just going to get... In Red Dead Redemption 2, it would be chatter while riding a horse. In this game, it's a cell phone call. Here's the part where the game actually tells us what we're supposed to do. You want this Pelosi guy clipped? No, God, no. Is that an option? No, no, no. Bad idea. Bad well, why idea. not? No clipping anyone. Just teach him some manners. He's also in my director's ear as well. You See if you can get Gay Tony so to take care of it for us. Lesson and bring the talent back to set. Ideally, in a more collaborative mood. Mm. I'll see what I can do. Mm -hmm. They all gonna be at the club? I'm told it isn't a club so much as a rat pit. Anton and Milton are supposed rat to be pit there, club, and yeah. Pelosi's on the way to pick them up. He's taking them to his lawyer to sign the contracts. So if he hears there's someone from the studio coming, he'll get him out fast. Oh wow! I guess it's a good thing I happened to meet up with you and talk to you the for the first time, just moments away from the time where all this was going down. That's a happy coincidence for us, eh, Solomon? All right, I'll go in quiet. See you on the set, boss. And uh, I'll be ready with that happy ending, even though we joked about how I wasn't going to give you one. It's obvious that it'd actually be honored, sir. It's a nice looking car there. Yeah. You are the losers, like all Americans are losers. Sorry, there. Something on that radio ad about losers taking public transport just brought back memories of Ludwig Borga and his incredibly clever <laughs> insults that he used to deliver against American fans of pro wrestling. 
the late Ludwig Borga, Tony Holm, I think was his real name. He was a, apparently a real piece of shit in real life, but uh, he once uh, he once told the American fan he once grabbed a microphone and told American fans that Lex Luger, excuse me, Lex Luger, excuse me, he was a loser like all Americans are losers, and of course everyone was. This is incredibly effective, you know. <laughs> everyone was like shocked and horrified at this guy, and it's bad enough that he was from. America's greatest enemy, Finland. But uh, then he said Americans were losers. We were all, the whole world was stunned by how effective a bad guy he was. All right, so it's about time probably to call it a video. I think I'm a little bit behind what I got done in my prior video, but uh, So in the video this is replacing, I had gotten through a, a chunk of this mission, but instead I think we'll just start out, uh, when we come back next time, with the uh, cinematic that will open this, and uh, just be aware that it's going to involve a helicopter and Rocco Pelosi, and um, more importantly than all that, it will involve my actual live commentary being captured. I'm Mysterious JG, thanks very much for watching, I'll catch you next time for more GTA 5. Bye-bye.